Good morning, all. You guys have heard of uh, uh, the stories around Facebook having to uh, uh, stop certain bots talking to each other because they invented their own language. Uh, you've heard of Tesla creating cars uh, which are uh, uh, which which can predict crashes, which drive on their own. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the world of artificial intelligence. This is what is it all all about. This is computers talking to us, computers doing things for us, computers thinking for us. That's that's the world of artificial intelligence. Now, before we talk about artificial intelligence, it's important to understand what does uh, what is intelligence. What does general intelligence mean? Uh, yeah. So, what what does intelligence mean? Uh, I think this. Uh, it's probably not very legible. Uh, I'll anyway talk through th talk through those things. So, there are various models of intelligence that have been created uh, since since time immemorial. Uh, the one you see was created by somebody called as Harvard Gardner. Uh, if you talk to various people, they have different views about it. If you if you if you've heard Einstein, Einstein used to say that uh, uh, intelligence is all about uh, uh, you know uh, ability to think, imagination, and so forth. If you talk to somebody like Rene Descartes, uh, Rene Descartes had given the famous uh, dictum "cogito ergo sum," which means "I think, therefore I am." So, what exactly is intelligence? If you look at the dictionary, uh, the de the definition is quite small and 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 uh, you know uh, uh, sweet. It says uh, intelligence is our ability to apply knowledge and skills. But is that really intelligence? This model that you see here, it gives you various flavors of intelligence. So for example, somebody who's a good mathematician, his, his mind thinks on the logical side of things. Somebody who, has, who knows multiple languages, very different from mathematics, right? Somebody who is very good at developing interpersonal and intrapersonal skills. That's a different type of intelligence that's required, right? Uh, somebody with, uh, who, who's, who's a good singer, or, or somebody who's a good sportsman. Now, what exactly is intelligence? Because these are absolutely different and almost orthogonal uh, facets of intelligence. So what is intelligence? The bad news is that nobody seems to agree what, what, what is one single way of measuring intelligence. The, the good news is that by now, there is a general ag agreement that all of these constitutes towards multiple forms of intelligence. The reason I took this detour is for, 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 for all of us to understand that when we talk of artificial intelligence, we need to understand what intelligence is and more importantly, we need to understand that there is no single definition of intelligence to start with. Moving on. So, before I get into the uh, uh, world of AI and, 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 and so forth, let me, let me uh, 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 let me take you back in how we've been using machines. One of the primary uses of machines that we've, we've developed over the years is around uh, automating our work. Right from the time of Stone Age where we invented tools till, till the current times. We are actually, uh, the whole idea behind machines is to automate. Now, how is artificial intelligence doing it differently? It's important to understand this. Cars, for example, uh, did automation for transportation. Yeah, uh, there were machines in the industrial revolution which automated manufacturing to a large extent. So how is AI different from that automation? A small point, but it's very important to understand. The big difference between now and then is that now we have developed an ability in the machines to actually start learning. Let me give you a small example. All of you have seen a barcode reader uh, in, in, in retail shops. Now this barcode reader is pretty dumb. Normally what you see in the retail shops, it's pretty dumb. The, 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 the thing is that the barcode reader tries to read the barcode and, and fetches its number, but if you scratch the barcode, the, the paper where the barcode is printed, it's not able to recognize it. Now there is an artificially intelligent version of it. What happens is, uh, and it's all software, the hardware is still the same. What happens effectively is that uh, this uh, program, for the first time it sees a scratch, it is still not able to recognize it. So it behaves no different from the dumb version of, uh, dumbed down version of artificial intelligence, uh, the, of the barcode reader. But, uh, so what, what that means is the human inter uh, intervenes and human enters the number. But more importantly, the barcode reader or the computer program that is running the barcode reader learns from that. So after a couple of interactions, the barcode reader is able to understand scratches and uh, you know certain dis discontinuities in the barcode, and it starts recognizing images. So that is the big difference between what was going on earlier and now. Now we have an ability to train the machines to actually learn. We don't have to put all the data up front. All we have to do is give it certain set of conditions, and it is able to generalize those conditions over a period of time. So that's the important difference between uh, what was happening earlier and what where AI and machine learning is taking us to. So what are the? How did we get here? It's important to understand that. 
uh, you know, I'll start uh, uh, with uh, the 1950s because the concept of automatons has been there forever, even in mythologies. I'll not go there. But the important timelines that you see on the slide, uh, they are, they are, the, those important events are good to know. First, first and foremost was uh, the... Okay, yeah, I'm back to the slide. So the first and foremost was the concept of what is called as a Turing test. The Turing test was, so Alan Turing is considered to be modern, uh, to, to be a father of modern computers. And what Turing actually created was a test of how do you define something is a computer or a human. And what the Turing test says is that if a human interacts with a computer, and, and he doesn't know that he's interacting with a computer or a human. And if he's not able to recognize a computer and a human, then the computer is considered to be intelligent. That's the basic idea of Turing test. Now, that was created, the theoretical model of what, what is intelligence uh, in, in respect to computers was created way back in 1950. And the entire mathematics behind it, because a lot of these fancy things which I showed you on, for example, on the, in the video clip, they are all part of, uh, you know, the, the, the basis behind it is a lot of mathematics and probability theory and so forth. I'll not go into those details, but it's important to understand that. The work was done in the 60s, and DARPA, which is the US uh, 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 Pentagon-funded agency, and, and uh, the US, uh, the, the UK Department of Defense, they funded a lot of programs on artificial intelligence, especially around what is called as artificial general intelligence, which is uh, a computer is able to show emotions, a computer is able to learn, a computer is able to, you know, think through general conditions rather than feeding everything uh, up front. Those are the sort of things that happen. However, towards the uh, end of 60s, uh, what people realized was it was too hard a problem to solve. They just didn't have the computing power or other things to uh, take it further. So what, what happened in the 70s was what is classically called as the AI winter. All the ideas around artificial general intelligence were dropped down and what people started doing was basically around uh, artificial, uh, applied artificial intelligence. So just solve small problems which are practical and which make you money. However, around 1980s, for example, the, uh, the interest was revived again. Uh, there was a concept called as expert systems, which was basically systems which were fed enough data and they were able to give intelligent answers. And the revival happened again. However, in the 1990s, I think the big event uh, uh, was, uh, if those of you remember, Gary Kasparov, the reigning chess champion who was unbeaten, was actually beaten by the IBM computer. So that was a big event which, uh, which, which created a lot of hype around uh, computers becoming intelligent. However, things really started moving in the 2000s. So the first uh, event on that was Google creating self-driving cars. Now, these self-driving cars created the entire framework around which further research happened, especially the mathematical framework and the computing framework. The other interesting bit happened, of course, the other contributor was Microsoft. They created, uh, for, for some of you who are into gaming will know, uh, they created this device called as Kinect. Now, what Kinect does is it's, it, it, it views, it looks at human movements, it recognizes human movements and, uh, and, and uh, mimics those movements in the computer. So basically, that's, that, that's where a lot of progress was made around image recognition. How is the human moving and can I replicate it? You know? And I think 2015 is the sort of year where uh, things started moving really fast. So you can say it's, we've reached now, crossed that point of inflection where AI will slowly become mainstream. And in 2015, what happened was uh, image recognition algorithms have become so good that they have now exceeded uh, their ability to accurately identify images compared to humans. So now you have computers which are able to recognize images better than humans would. That's, that's why 2015 is the, uh, the, the year, the point of inflection as far as AI uh, and machine learning is concerned. Of course, where does it all lead to? And I've, I mentioned that point around uh, uh, technological singularity. So, so the point, uh, so there are people who predict that technology will, will, or computers will become so good that recursively they'll become better than uh, what's available, uh, 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 become better than the human mind by 1945, uh, by 20, 2045. Uh, okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll come to the last section of my talk, which is where, where is this all leading to? So there are multiple models uh, in place about understanding where is AI heading. So I've, I pointed out what is classically called as Gartner's hype cycle. Uh, this is a standard model used to predict where technology is heading in the technological world. Essentially what the model says is that initially there is innovation, there is a hype, 
and then there is a disillusionment, disillusionment with the technology because people can't make money out of it. That's the bottom line. And then over a period of time, people still figure out how to learn, deal with it, and then it becomes a more mature technology. So currently, if you go by the Gartner hype cycle, uh, AI and machine le learning are at the hype of their uh, cycle, which means we are unlikely to see anything concrete in the immediate future. But in about four to five years' time, I think AI is going to become all, all the more pervasive. I have given you small examples of where AI is used in that video clip, where this is, this is my own phone. You can try it if you have, if you're an iPhone user, you have Siri, which does exactly the same things. If you're an Android user, I just showed you an example. You can talk to your phone. And uh, so, so, so uh, I think in another next five to 10 years, it, this, this is going to become mainstream. Some of, some of, some of the technology be, uh, developed here is going to become qu quite mainstream. So that's, that's the Gartner hype cycle way of looking at it. Then there is the other way of looking at it, which is, uh, I'm sure you guys have heard about uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the big debate between Elon Musk and uh, Mark Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg says AI is fine. Uh, uh, Musk says, no, we must have regulations around AI. The, the challenge there is that with automation, uh, History, uh, uh, Vic, uh, Vic, uh, history uh, tells us that with automation, we lose jobs. But jobs are created elsewhere. However, with AI, what has happened is the pace of automation has gone, uh, uh, grown up exponentially. And that's, that's where regulation is required. You might have also heard, for example, in India, uh, the transport minister has said that we are not going to allow driverless cars because it kills jobs. So I think there will be a feedback to the system. AI will, uh, so while the exponents of AI will say we'll, we'll automate everything and we'll kill almost 30% or 40% of jobs by 2030 or so in the US, uh, there will two computers talk, regardless of whether they're using AI or not. They have, they talk to each other using something called as protocol. Okay, uh, and, and in this case, the protocol, expected protocol was the English language. What happened as a consequence of their research was that while the, uh, the, the chatbots uh, continued to negotiate and they be actually became better at negotiations. They actually uh, started using their own language in the sense that they uh, optimized the English words in their own, uh, to have their own meaning, which was not understood by the people. So they developed their own protocol. So it was nothing fancy and the program was shut down not because uh, it was going to create some sort of uh, bots which would do their own things, but the program was actually shut down because the, the bots were not doing what they were intended to do, which is talk to each other in English language. So that was the story around uh, the Facebook chat bots. In the end, I would like to conclude by saying that uh, AI and uh, machine learning is affecting us right now. Having said that, in the long term, I think it's the, uh, the economically most viable things will survive. Everything else will be thrown on the wayside. Thank you.